The law of momentum states that an object in motion will continue to be in motion unless it is met with a resistance force. Now this force in the case of cars or motorcycles is usually the brakes and most cars and most motorcycles at least in the modern era tend to come with one of two braking types either the drum brake or the disc brake. What are the differences? What are the advantages and the disadvantages? That's what we're going to take a look in today's episode of Simplified on Power Drift. Now first, let's talk about how a braking system works in the most simplest form. Now basically, when you squeeze the brake pedal or the brake lever, pressurized fluid is sent to either the disc or the drum, causing friction and causing you to stop. A byproduct of this friction is heat and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now first, let's talk about the drum braking system and of course, the first component we'll be talking about here is the drum. So you basically have a large metal drum which is attached to the wheel and if the wheel moves, the drum moves and vice versa. Now inside the drum, you have a pair of brake shoes. Now these brake shoes, the primary and the secondary brake shoe, when you squeeze the brake pedal or the lever, these brake shoes will expand, they will rub against the wall of the drum and this causes friction, causing you to come to a stop. Fairly simple and there are actually a few advantages of a drum braking system. Now the first advantage is cost. Drum brakes tend to be cheaper to make and use low cost, slightly heavier metals. So they're just overall cheaper. So in situations where drum brakes can be used without compromising safety too much, manufacturers tend to use it. An example of this is that you will often see cars will have front disc brakes and rear drum brakes. Now rear brakes are tend to use much lesser in a car and a motorcycle as well. So it is okay to use drum brakes there, saving a little bit of cost and not really compromising too much in terms of safety. The second advantage of a drum brake is longevity. Now all the essential components of a drum brake are housed inside a drum. So no dust or debris is really getting into that drum. So that basically improves the longevity of the components. Now secondly, the brake shoes are never really rubbing up against the walls of the drum unless they're in use, again, improving their longevity. The third advantage is that if the drum brakes have not been used in a long time, they still tend to work better right from the get-go. Now, there are two examples of a situation. Number one is if you just plain and simple haven't used your car or bike for a long time and you start to get going, you can depend on your drum brakes right from the moment you set off. The second situation where this can be useful is in the case of electric vehicles. Now, electric vehicles anyways reduce their dependency on friction brakes by the way of regenerative brakes. We also have a simplified on regenerative brakes. You can take a look at that somewhere either below or here on the top, uh, either way. But generative brakes basically reduce the car's dependency on friction brakes. Now, this means that the front brakes will anyways be used less, but the rear brakes will be used far, far less. So there can be situations where you might drive for about a week in the city, not brake hard and basically not use the drum brakes at all if your electric vehicle has drum brakes at the rear. Now, in this situation, the drum brakes can be slightly safer as well because when you do use the brakes and when you do step hard on the brakes, the drum brakes will still be there ready to stop your car. Now, there are a few disadvantages to drum brakes and these disadvantages are slightly more severe than the advantages of drum brakes. Number one is heat. Because all the components that cause the friction are housed inside a large metal drum, there is no real place for that heat to be dissipated. Now, because of this, if you're, let's say, for example, going down a steep downhill where you're constantly on the brakes, or if you're going through a series of corners driving fast and you're constantly having to hit the brakes, you will feel that as soon as the heat comes to a certain point in the braking system, the drum brakes just fail to provide any sort of braking force right when you might need it to. So in high performance situations or in situations where you're constantly using the brakes and using them hard, drum brakes tend to fade quicker and fail sooner because of their lack of good thermal management. The second disadvantage is complexity and weight. There are a lot of moving components inside a drum brake, so that makes their construction just a lot more complex. And secondly, it tends to use heavier low cost metals in its construction. So the drum brake tends to be just heavier in itself. Now, in terms of its design alone, the disc brake is far simpler than the drum brake. What you have is basically a large rotor and on that rotor is a set of calipers. When you press the brake pedal or you squeeze the brake lever, these calipers squeeze onto the brake disc by way of brake pads in the way and that causes friction and causes you to stop. Now, because of the design of the disc brakes, there are a few advantages of disc brakes and number one is thermal management. 
because the entire design of the disc brake is exposed to the air and actually you'll see on modern disc brakes they'll have slots or slashes or some way to actually get even more air to hit the disc brake and cool it. Now because of this, disc brakes tend to have far better thermal management. So in high performance situations, disc brakes are the way to go. Of course, we've seen modern interpretations of the disc brake use carbon ceramics and all sorts of other components and alloys to either improve the performance or the thermal efficiency of the brakes or reduce their weight. So in high performance situations, there's really no number two to disc brakes. Now those are the basic differences between a drum brake and a disc brake. What we learned from this video is that the drum brakes tend to be okay for most city situations and most low speed situations where the brakes aren't being used too often and too hard. As soon as you start to use your brakes very often and very hard and constantly, the disc brakes stand far superior. Another big takeaway for you should be that drum brakes are okay in the rear. Rear brakes are not really used that often, especially in cars. So it's okay for manufacturers to have drum brakes in the back without really compromising too much in the way of safety. And that's it for this episode of Simplified. I'll catch you on the next one.